Christian Leitner about to jump it up with George Ackles. Grant Hill for Duke. Well, if the freshman who had a very tough time in the regional needed something to get off to a good start, that was it. Anderson Hunt wasting no time. Wow. Oh, three-pointer. This is a dome, Jim, but he almost reached the banner with that one. And here's the matchup we talked about. Man to man, you can see Duke spreading things out way up high, trying to get some good spacing. Larry Johnson is on Grand Hill, and they've got Ackles on Leitner. Some of the matchups we were wanting to monitor right today. You can see Duke going to use some clock. Three pointer oh. by Leitner. Shaquille O'Neal saw that play, and George Ackles will have to go out and respect Christian Leitner's tremendous ability to step outside. Straight man. It's Kubek on Johnson down low. Ackles says, I can shoot it out here, too, but he comes off the mark. And you can see the strategy by Duke right away. Leitner is not going to guard Ackles, make Larry oh. Johnson have some problems inside. How about that? A great pass is Hurley led Hill perfectly. And that ball may have even been helped going in by a UNLV defender. It put a little English on it, Jim, to it take it right up over the rim. You can see what Duke is going to do. Try to attack whenever possible immediately. If they don't have something, bring it back out and play somewhat of a delay game. Great confidence boost for uh, Grant Hill with four points in the game's first minute. And it's Thomas Hill out on Hunt, and he's going to try to shadow him all the way to keep him out of that three-point mode. There's that matchup. Back yep. out to Anthony and Hurley. Augman. Kubek just banging around down there on Larry Johnson. And Leitner is trying to help him, not guarding Ackles at all. 15 on the shot. Hunt driving. Hunt. Excellent. Yep. Great defense by Duke on that trip. Now that's something that is really out of character for Vegas, and that is to have Anderson Hunt with dribble penetration instead of staying out in his area. That's Anthony's job. Here we see from the high camera the defensive strategy. Johnson's going to have to play perimeter defense. He's capable of doing that, but he'd rather be down on the low post. Leitner, he was bumped by Ackles. Jim, I'm seeing a couple of things right off the bat. Jerry Tarkanian made an excellent point. He said, I realize Duke has matchup problems with Kubek on Johnson, but I've got matchup problems with Leitner, because who's going to go outside to pick him up? Two shots, man. Two shots for Christian Leitner. Don't call him Chris. He has an older brother named Chris, who's an umpire in the minor leagues. In fact, he's an umpire in the in the Carolina area, a ball. Leitner now 29 of 32 free throws in the NCAA tournament, the number one free throw shooter in the tournament so far at six foot 10. Adds two free throws to the three pointer he hit earlier. 9 3 Duke. And look at this pressure. Kubek presses and then gets back for Johnson. Anthony gets tangled, and they call a foul on Hurley, who was just lying on the floor. The feet got tangled. They slapped the foul on Hurley. Now, Hurley was down. Anthony went right over the top of him and tripped on Hurley. It had to either be a walk on Anthony or a foul on Hurley, and the official went in that, in that direction. I'm waiting to see when Vegas is going to get that ball to Larry Johnson down low. That's got to be the key for him, and they haven't been able to do it yet. Kubek has done a great job fronting him so far. Anthony too strong on the jumper. And inside, they call a push off against Thomas Hill. And you can believe both of these coaches, after what happened in that first game, will be very hesitant to react too strongly from the sidelines. Quickly inbounding it to Larry Johnson. Splits the defenders and scores. And Kubek, I'm sure, cannot be asked to stop Johnson. It's really to try to hold him up a little bit. Leitner left open. Nice dribble penetration by Grant Hill. Duke a perfect four for four from the floor. Oh, he is so strong inside. But Hill helps out and gets the steal. Now watch, Duke will go on the attack here. If they don't have something, bring it out and make UNLV work on the defensive end. Leitner called for it. He got it. 
Beautiful feed. Leitner with nine already, Billy. Are we seeing some Mike Krzyzewski attitude on his ball club? It's translated coach to player here. He has his guys believing they can play this UNLV team. Ogden bounce pass to Ackles. Hurley says, hey, there was a travel out there. He, he's a guy that loves to referee while he plays. As a matter of fact, his own teammates this year had to have a talk with him to say, Bobby, you play the game, let them referee. Very unusual. The foul went against Leitner. Not a bad foul. You put Ackles on the line, who is not a good free throw shooter, instead of giving him one of those dunks. Of course, earlier in this tournament, Ackles... Uh, had a sprain on the top of his foot. Left foot hobbled him a bit. He's fine now, but missing the first free throw. That, of course, not unusual because he's only shooting 59% on the year. Thirteen to six, Duke. now coming out the guard late now late won't mind going by him. what a play almost got it too strong Ackles got away with a pretty good bump there Hunt, another high arching shot <laughs> bounces right off the rim and over the backboard game two from the Hoosier Dome Indianapolis Jim Nance and Billy Packer James Brown and Leslie Visser are here along with Pat O'Brien and Mike Francesa Duke with the early lead on the defending champions. Jim, one of the things that this matchup gives Duke a big advantage, Larry Johnson on Grand Hill, is that now Hurley does not have to dribble the ball up the court and work hard to get the ball in play. So Tarkanian's move to put Johnson on Hill really works in Duke's advantage. Duke's largest lead, it's at nine. Six points by Grand Hill. Ackles left open for the jumper. They'll give him that shot. Percentages there. Yep, Leitner staying back just to make sure they help out on the Johnson situation. And you can see Mike going with substitutes. I guarantee you one of them will be for Kubek just to try to keep him fresh. Leitner inside. Grant Hill right under the cylinder. And Greg Anthony comes out with it. And he'll turn that shoulder looking to hit on that pass. Augman tied up. Possession arrow belongs to the Rebels. Excellent play by Kubek to help out. Well, if anyone wondered if Duke can play with UNLV, the answer early is yes. Back at the Hoosier Dome where the defending champions are trailing for only the fourth time this year. During that last time out, Jerry Tarkanian said, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're playing like we're afraid of them. He said, get a body on them, get tough, and take the first good shot. Jim? All right. Well, that's not a great play by the Thanks. Rebels, but a nice save by Hunt. Antonio Lang is in for Duke, along with Brian Davis. And Lang will be on Johnson. Now, Lang has got more size than Kubek, nowhere near the experience, but is a great shot block. There he oh. is. Oh. Grant Hill, and they call it goaltending on Grant Hill. Lang is, is a tremendous shot blocker, quick off his feet, but again, does not have the lower body strength. Nor does, and look at the amoeba defense right away by Jerry Tarkanian. He was getting torn up in the man-to-man. -man. Had to use this against Utah almost the entire second half. And you remember when we talked to him the other day, Jimmy said, any game we win where we can't win it man-to-man, -man, I put an asterisk behind the win. He may need the asterisk today. Davis traveling. Now, what Mike Krzyzewski does is counter the McCaffrey, and, he, and he's going to do this, obviously, for outside shooting against that zone. And it's not like this zone, though, however, uh, lets the shooter have wide open shots. Hurley picks up at midcourt. Duke leading by five. Davis on Augman. Boy, there's some neat matchups in this game. Terrific yeah. matchups. Anthony from behind. Lang got a hand on it. There he is, the shot blocker I talked about. Lang is a, is a freshman from Alabama, and he started eight times this year, Billy. Well, he had six blocks against East Carolina. 
and also against Michigan. Ball blocked out of bounds. Resetting, yep, resetting the shot clock. Those two six block performances by Lang were very close to one another. Only two players have scored for Duke in this game. Leitner and Grant Hill. And, and watch Leitner. He is staying off Ackles as much as possible to help out down inside. Good double down by Hurley that time. Ackles again challenged for the jumper. Johnson, strong move inside. Well, there's the block out. Lang has got to forget about trying to get rebounds when they go up. He's got to put a body on Larry Johnson. Six unanswered for the Rebels. And they're doing it out of the zone. Now, Lang is looking for the lob. There. Hurley's pass maybe telegraphed now, a bit. Augman stole it. But he was trying to get it down to Lang inside, but he threw the baseball pass instead of going for the lob. Augman somehow got it to Hunt. Look at Ackles sky and turn around and get the roll. Well, if you're Mike Krzyzewski, you've got to be saying in the game plan, if Ackles is going to beat us, we were in trouble anyway. And so far, George Ackles has come to the front. His substitute, however, is sitting on the bench right now. Now Leitner looking for the lob. Davis leans in, Ackles takes it away. Johnson made the play. Duke unable to do anything against the Amoeba so far. Larry Johnson fakes, goes inside and turns it over. Augman couldn't get it. And of course, Mike Krzyzewski won an offensive charge on that play, no foul call. Kubek's back in, Billy, for Lang. Well, what that does against the Amoeba, now they have McCaffrey and Kubek Two pretty good three-point shooters to try to go ahead and extend this defense out a little bit. Davis, as you know, not a good three-point shooter. Billy McCaffrey with the basketball. Good skip pass. Davis slashing to the hole. Oh, he gets it to go. Oh. Had the spin on it, didn't he? Yep. Second shot today that Duke has been able to get the weasel right over that rim. Foul on Larry Johnson's his first. Good skip pass set this up so that Davis could go ahead and cut right through the seam of the zone. Larry Johnson reaches in. He is so strong. That ball went right under Spencer's arm. It just it touched the very bottom portion of the glass. Now Spencer is not going to be able to step out and do the things that Ackles did. And this will be interesting now. He likes to go down on the low blocks and let Larry Johnson outside. So Leitner will have to occupy himself down low with Spencer. Three-point play by Brian Davis to get the lead back to four for Duke. Anthony hustling, coming up short. Getting it back, however. And he is a tough kid. Plays with pain, great experience. Was known as a shooter and scorer when he was at Portland before his transfer. Hurley penetrates, dishes to Kubek. Three from the corner is off. And Johnson snatches the rebound. Look Touchdown. at the pass to Hunt. Touchdown. Oh, the hand of the Augman. And UNLV ties it at 18. Have you ever seen anybody in the college game throw that pass better than Larry Johnson? Boy, it's just a flick of the wrist. And now they go back to man-to-man. -to -man. Got back in this game with their zone. Now they go back to man-to-man. -to -man. And Leitner wants to clear out against Spencer. Leitner goes back out to Hurley. He goes on the blocks. Bounced it right off his own chest. Well, Christian Leitner a little bit too anxious to score. UNLV on a 12-3 run to tie it. Duke and UNLV deadlocked at 18. 11-28 left in the first half. UNLV with seven offensive rebounds to zero for Duke. Not surprising. Duke having to really be conscious of getting back on defense to prevent the break. Anderson Hutt on a rub off trying to get his jumper. Spencer. Missed the short one. But Johnson with the eighth offensive rebound. Missing. With Grant Hill for Duke things that UNLV 
Bradley has done is taken away the running game from Duke until that shot by Thomas Hill. Thomas Hill gets started. You've got to make some shots in transition against this team. Three-pointer. UNLV in front. You notice something different, Jim, in terms of the stroke of the UNLV experienced players compared to North Carolina in the first game. I mean, you know, nice, solid follow-through on the shot. Not pinching it off at all. And they go back to the zone. Spencer came around to deny, but they say he got a hand on the back of Leitner. Game being very closely officiated so far. Third team foul on UNLV. Duke will inbound underneath. Leitner had nine quick points, but since the turn to the amoeba, now back to man to man, he hasn't scored. Here's Thomas Hill. Way too strong. Good job by Spencer, but Spencer twisted his ankle on that one. Augman suspended in air. Thomas Hill with a high rebound. You may see Ackles have to come back in the game. Spencer really uh, very gingerly on that ankle. And grimacing. Yep. As he's trying to front Leitner. Hurley, three-pointer. Pretty good defense. For Augman get the rebound. Anderson Hunt spotting up over the side. One is three. And Anthony off the glass too strong. Second offensive rebound by Anthony. Larry Johnson lays it in. UNLV ahead by three. What made the play, though, was Greg Anthony coming in for that sec second rebound. Getting the points on second opportunities. Leitner, turn around. No second chances at all for Duke. It's one shot and done. Probably a walk got away with it. Got back in the hands of Augman. Grant Hill comes out of the pack. Bounces it to Hurley. Hits the trailer and Duke. Scores with Grant Hill. Now, Jim, if Vegas is going to get this much offensive rebounding, Duke has got to go long with somebody, release some players to force UNLV to have somebody back. As we saw, Greg Anthony is in there getting offensive rebounds and penetrating, so nobody's back on defense. And Duke has got to make them pay as they did right there for that play. You like that pass, didn't you? Excellent. Brian Davis has returned to the lineup. Crawford Palmer's in for the Blue Devils. He's fronting Larry Johnson on the far side. They go in to Spencer. Lefty shot way off the bar. offensive board. Brian Davis, they say, bumped into Augman. Another offensive board, though, Jim, and it is really starting to take the toll. A lot of easy second putbacks for UNLV. 11 offensive rebounds now. 11 to 0, and Ackles is back in. And what we see right here is Jerry Tarkanian wisely using his two big men. Christian Leitner has not yet been out of the game. And it is going to tell a, a toll on him as time goes by. Lob it right over Palmer. Johnson finds Augman cutting to the hole. Score it! And a foul. Great teamwork inside. Larry Johnson with a soft pass. If that ball had been thrown hard, no way it could be handled. It just laid a feathery pass to him. That's just beautiful touch pass. Augman with the great hands and ability to hang up there and see what's going on before he delivered the shot. First on Palmer, fifth on Duke. Augman does not convert the three-point play. He sets a record today, his 145th game. Stacy Augman at UNLV, that's the all-time mark, breaking Freddie Banks' previous games played record. Over Ackles to Leitner. Saves it to Davis. Too strong. There's an offensive rebound by Leitner. First of the game for Duke. Right, first of the game. You talked about Augman setting records. A record of their own. They became, Augman and Johnson became only the fifth. Two guys to make the AP first team All-American. Missing outside. Gets back in his hands. Hurley strips it free. The save to Davis. Hurley's got to get back out on the court. Good, smart move by Davis. Augman and Johnson, first team AP All-America. Yep. First two from a team since uh, uh, Mike, North Carolina. That's right. Michael Jordan and Sam Perkins back in 1984. Yep. Duke can regain the lead with a basket here. And back to the zone goes UNLV. Davis gets Ackles to commit. Over to Hurley. Three-pointer. Hurley's on his way. Three for Hurley. His first points. Cross-court pass to Hunt. 
Oh, gets the soft roll. How did Anthony see him? Uh, he, Anthony has that body turned, ready to fire and deliver that ball in excellent fashion. And, of course, we know that Anderson Hunt can finish, whether it be on the break or the drive. Jerry Tarkanian's been forced to play an awful lot of zone. Grant Hill lost the dribble. Augman the steal. Anthony gets the assist to Hunt. Boy, when UNLV goes on the break, do they convert a high percentage or not? I mean, you know. You know what that reminded me of? Remember uh, the Arkansas game where it seemed like every time we looked up, Hunt was scoring uncontested on a layup? Well, as Tark said, it was supposed to be 40 minutes of all, but he thought it was 40 minutes of layups for his team. <laughs> what a block by Ackles. 40 minutes of layups, yeah. Anthony, two-pointer, they say. Leitner on the rebound. 6.50 left in the first half. A two-point lead for the running Rebels. And the defense stays in the zone. See, they're matching up out front. Good pass. Forceful oh, pass. Yeah. Count the basket. Leitner's going to the line. This young man has not been out of the game. He's being matched up by two very good centers and still putting on a terrific show. Splitting of the seam with the pass. Christian Leitner goes up, realizing no chance putting it on the board. Go for the dunk and still scores. He already has 13, can add a point to that total here. We just talked about Augman and Johnson being first team All-America. Leitner made second team. That puts Duke back in front, Billy. It's been a good first half, hasn't it? Excellent first half. 6.36 to go, first half, one point lead for Duke. One point game, 6.36 to go in the first half. Front court scoring, Duke led by Leitner's big performance as a 10 point bulge in that area. The team shooting well. 57% against the normal situation where UNLV holds teams to just 39%. Duke plays their first zone of the game. Leitner is not in there at the moment, but he's checking in at the scores table to get an extended blow. Right, you can see what the strategy is for Mike Krzyzewski. When Leitner out of the game, go zone, because they'd be very, very small without him in there. They've got Palmer in the middle. They whip it around to Everett Gray. Gray drives, offensive, they say. Got by with a walk before the charge. An explosive score from off the bench. No basket. Offensive on Everett Ray. There's the walk. And then he finally put the ball down, but does pick up the charge. Crawford Palmer drew the charge. You know, Arnold Palmer used to be noted for his charges, and now Crawford Palmer <laughs> Takes being one. known for taking it, right? <laughs> nice dish. Oh! Leitner, too strong. Johnson with the rebound. Excellent pass inside. Greg Anthony really pushing the ball up the floor beautifully in the first half. How about that shot? Greg Anthony, nine for the point guard of the Rebels. But one thing that Duke has proven, last year they just got taken completely out of the game with a tough man-to-man -to -man pressure. Today they have forced UNLV to play the zone. Everett Gray at the other end after the Leitner basket. Leitner at the other end gets the rebound. Leitner is getting chopped up pretty good. That's a yes, sir. No question on that one. With the body, Anthony fouling Hurley. Let's get a report now from Leslie Visser. In the last time out, uh, Jerry Tarkanian told his team that he wanted them two things. He said he wants them to move the ball around, and they're not moving without the ball. So he wanted both those things. He also wanted George Ackles to get his body on the glass, and he wanted them to penetrate. Of course, Gray was called for the offensive foul there. Jim. All right, Leslie. Duke leading by a point with possession. 5-10 left in the first half. Good move here to take some time off the clock to give Christian Leitner a chance to get a breather every once in a while. Hurley setting up. Three-pointer. Got the feet set. And nails it. And an excellent follow-through by Bobby Hurley. The skip pass is working pretty well against the zone. Four-point Duke lead. Kubek fronting Johnson. What a screen. 
Johnson open. He'll take the three. Short. They're all over the back of Leitner. They call it on Ackles. You know, Christian Leitner looks like a choir boy, but he is a fierce, fierce competitor. And that is three on Ackles. And we remember Elmore Spencer had the little bit of an ankle problem, and it really changes the strategy when he goes in there. He is a low box player, and he also could not possibly go out and play Christian Leitner in a man-to-man -man defensive situation. James Brown has an update for us. James? All right, Jimmy. And talking with a number of the Duke players before the game, they acknowledged that intimidation was a major intangible advantage that UNLV had last year. Coach K wanted his team to get off to a fast start, not allowing his guys to get a chance to be scared. Last time out, he said, hey, fellas, we've proven we can play with them. It's two teams on equal footing now. Let's go play. Let's get back to Jimmy. Leitner hits the front end of the one and one. Is the intimidation factor over with for Duke? Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. As a matter of fact, I, I think that Duke came out not intimidated from the beginning. Six-point lead for the Devils. Don't leave Hunt open. Exactly. You know, Hunt is going to flatten out to that position, and you have to run right to him in the beginning because they'll find him, whether it be Johnson or Anthony. They know where he is over there. Back to the man-to-man. -man. I think it's time to give Leitner the ball out at the top. Here he is. But Spencer will back off a yeah, little bit. He Res he respect he his he ability. He can't handle him there. Leaning in. Spencer snaps the rebound. Augman. Nice defense by Grant Hill. Greg Anthony with a man on him. Oh, still boy. hits the top. What a half. Three. What a half, Jim. 12 points for Anthony. The game is tied at 37. Timeout on the court. The game is tied once again. In fact, coming up at halftime, we'll be hearing from Coach Roy Williams a little bit more. And Billy, you guys will be dissecting what happened to Dean Smith at the end of that game when he was tossed out after his second technical. I really feel bad for Dean Smith. I thought he was shown up at the end of that game. Although I know the replay is going to show he was out of the coach's box. Two ticky-tack technicals on the legend, and he was tossed out at the end of the game. And here we see back to the man-to-man. -to -man. Larry Johnson now guarding Leitner as Jerry Tarkane decides to go small. First time he hasn't had either Spencer or Ackles in the game. The lineup for Duke includes Hurley and Thomas Hill. Hill will take the shot. Had an open shot. Bouncing around, last touch by UNLV. Uh, how about Gray going up on the boards that time to keep it alive? McCaffrey. Leitner and Hurley, along with Thomas Hill and Grant Hill. Oh, Anthony, Anthony, another great play. Got the steal, tipped it back to Hoffman, and a little showtime at the other end. Boy, he's played with a broken jaw. He's played with all kinds of problems in his hands. Tark told us he'd make a great boxer. Feels no pain, has the quickest reflexes he's ever seen. Greg Anthony. He's on fire offensively now. Nice pump fake. Boy, did uh, Larry Johnson fall for that fake. Yeah, particularly with McCaffrey, who is not going to be quick enough to blow by him. Anthony off the hands of Augman. That's twice inside. Same kind of situation. Well, you know what happened? And Augman realized it was his fault. He saw Larry Johnson breaking from the other side, and he was going to make the pass before he caught the ball. Lost a little concentration there. Still a low number of turnovers, really, in this first half. Five for each team. Thomas Hill. That's swatted away by Augman. Four on two. Johnson. Again, Augman had a hard time handling it, and Duke will get it back. Augman, of course, I have a defensive player of the year last year, one of the leading candidates, if not going to be the winner again this year. Excellent shot blocker as well as a guy that can stop ball penetration. Hurley left open. In between Swish and Bank, and he went right between them. Hunt, so dangerous, in and out. Hill with the rebound. UNLV contesting a lot of rebounds down on the inside, putting some physical 
hands on the Duke players. Leitner, oh, assault. Anthony fell to the floor trying to draw the charge. That was such a soft shot in the baseline, almost behind the board. Has almost half their points, 20 of the 41 for Leighton. Well, I think back of the great game he has a freshman against Georgetown. East Regional Final. Look at that, way up off the glass, and they say it was touched. Take it away, offensive goaltender. Uh, Gray just tried to funnel it down inside, took away another sensational play by Anthony. We're seeing American display by Leitner, and there's no question about the call. The ball was in the cylinder and touched. But we're also seeing one of the best guard performances I've seen in a long time from Greg Anthony. Grant Hill takes it all the way. Too strong. Better find Hunt. How about Gray? Oh, oh did Grant you see Hill. Grant Hill? Yep. Yeah. And, and Anthony's getting up slow. He really took a shot. Grand Hill popped him. And to be honest with you, Jim, Grand Hill, if that were seen by the officials, should be out of the game. But what was happening is Vegas was taking a lot of shots at the Duke guys coming down after rebounds. And Hill had taken about all he wanted to, and he popped Anthony. So you talked about him being a fighter. He's down for the eight count here. But he's back up. Here we see Hill coming down. Bam, he popped him. And you know what? I'm going to take it back. It was not a deliberate shot. He got him with his shoulder. He may have been down for the eight count, but Richard Steele is not officiating this game. So this one still goes on. Hurley turns it over. Yeah, Hurley is wanting to get some help on the drive. If they're not going to call that foul, Bobby Hurley has to look to sit down a little bit after he makes his dribble penetration and make the pass. Game tied, final 30 seconds of the half. Where's the I, next milestone will be? How will Duke face that second half blitz you talked about, Billy, as one of your Packer points? Well, Vegas has only been behind at halftime once this year, and that was against Arkansas. Duke, as we know, 26-0 when they lead at halftime. Dangerous pass here. Still two seconds to work with. They try to set up Johnson, and the half is here. UNLV by two. Excellent half of basketball. The end of the first half, the score, UNLV 43, Duke 41. CBS Sports coverage of the Final Four will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Well, here we are for the second half, and UNLV in a tight one. 43-41 lead over Duke. Offensive rebounding edge. That was 11-0 at one time. Second half joints as points as a result of it, 16-2. And the field goal percentage is pretty even. Top scores, Leitner with 20, Greg Anthony with 16. And folks, let me tell you, there have been a couple of situations like this, Billy, in the tournament where someone's been competitive with UNLV for a half, but the next couple of minutes, we'll find out, right? Well, just think of the Seton Hall game where they came out the second half where Seton Hall had played a very, very quality first half and just blew them away. The first seven possessions, Seton Hall never even got off a shot. Let's see what happens here. That went off 14 to nothing run against Seton Hall in that West Final. And the man usually in this spot has been Larry Johnson. He had 10 of the 14 on that run against Seton Hall. Oh, nice give and go. Right away. Duke says you're not going to do it. Jerry Tarkanian took his tile and wanted to throw it in the stands on that one. He doesn't want to see a team execute a play like that against what he thinks is a vaunted defense. Kubek just hanging around with Johnson. But not as sharp as he normally is today. Thomas Hill with the rebound. Well, I'm surprised UNLV not trying to get the ball to Johnson down low with Kubek on him. Nice job by Leitner to come out and meet the pass. No way. Thomas Hill and Duke has the lead in the second half. 
Hunt right back with a three. Now, what, ha what happened there, Jim, is, is you have Thomas Hill is being played by Anthony. So he takes him down in the low post. When he's down in the low post, what happens to Anderson Hunt runs down to his spot-up position, and somebody will have to take Anderson Hunt because there's no way for Hill to go 90 feet to catch him. Duke led for about two seconds. And here's a steal, almost. Early gets it well, back. People are going to have to come and meet the pass here. UNLV cutting off all of the plays, and Hurley picks up his dribble. So if nobody comes to meet the ball, there's no way for him to throw it. Here's a stat for you, Billy. Uh, in the second half of games this year, UNLV's only trailed in two other occasions, Michigan State and Arkansas, but a total of one minute and 20 seconds in over 11 hours of action. And here comes Hunt. Breakaway time. Excellent defense by UNLV and poor execution by Duke. Not to set the screen and step out to get that inbounds pass. Three-point Vegas lead. And they're staying man-to-man -man here at the start of the second half. That's Vegas' largest lead of the game. Boy, they are really cutting off the dribble now. A little too tight a hand check, they say, by Augman, his first. But I'm really impressed the way Grant Hill is playing in this game, Jim. And as we mentioned last week, he was having a lot of problems. He's playing with a lot of confidence out here today. I still maintain that opening tip basket. Had him brimming with confidence. There he is. There he is. He's playing like a veteran. One of the truly outstanding freshmen in the country. And that is on Ackles, his fourth. And this year, after a loss at Duke, where Mike Krzyzewski did not feel his team played well, he brought them back on the bus, got off the bus, and said, fellas, we're going to practice. They practiced, and Grant Hill took one in the nose, got a broken nose, and missed a number of games. Took him a while to come back from that. Third year in a row, Coach Krzyzewski has had a key freshman in the starting lineup. Last year it was Hurley, the year before that it was late. Three-point play by Hill. And an interesting move by Jerry Tarkanian. It's not Spencer. Tarkanian goes small, which means that he's going to match Leitner up with Johnson. Hogman has it taken away. Hurley. He finishes. And he is fouled. I was wondering myself, would he finish the break or, or, or would he wait for his teammates and pull it out? Well, I think tremendous strategy by Mike Krzyzewski here in terms of any time they could push the ball up the court, they're doing it. Bobby Hurley sets his sight on that goal just as Anderson Hunt does when he goes on that break and converts a beautiful play. The Duke team, which over the last six years have, have averaged turning the ball over 20 times by their opponents, get a big one there. Three-point lead for Duke. That man, Ackles, saddled with four fouls. Now you'd have to say the matchup in man-to-man -man favors Duke a little bit. That's a little too aggressive for Leitner, his second. By the way, Billy, Duke started the game five for five from the floor. Now they're four for four in this half. Now look at how Larry Johnson posts up down low. Has incredible body strength and gets Christian Leitner on the back. Leitner can do nothing. Inbounds. And that ball was not goaltending because it had no chance to go in. And Hill is hurt. Hill is down. Gets to his feet, but the basket is made. And you see whose man that is. That is Thomas Hill's man. Anderson Hunt, who hits the jumper. He's in some serious pain here. It's twisted around. Just got his back twisted around. Boy, did he go up in the air. You can see right there is where he gets twisted. And goes down and stays down. And while he's on the floor, Anderson Hunt is spotting up at his patented three-point area and just buries another three-pointer. And, and the three by Hunt ties the game. Hunt with 18 points, eight points already in this half with only two and a half minutes of play in the second half. It's amazing, Jim, how patient he is to stand out in that three-point area, knowing his teammates being so unselfish will eventually find him. And he's always squared up when he shoots that jumper and has the perfect release. They're keeping Thomas Hill right down on the floor. Now 
on his feet for Thomas Hill, Duke. This gives Christian Leitner an opportunity to get a breath. We talked about how in the first half, Jerry Tarkanian tried to use both big men to wear him down. Leitner had a great first half with 20 points, and he's out there now going to be matched up probably a good portion of the rest of this night with Larry Johnson on both ends of the floor. We have had nine ties in this game and 15 lead changes. 51-51. Remember, Oklahoma-Kansas, 50-50 first half, 88. Championship game. That was the halftime score. Augman battles Leitner. May have heard Larry Johnson. He didn't like the call. Hurley will inbound. They're making it tough to get that ball to bounce. Good job by Davis. Slashes to the hole, came up way short. Oh, they called goaltending. Now that's the second time today that Gray won an offensive goaltending. And this second one, I believe this shot would have been a little short. Oh, it, was, it just looked yep. like it fell off his hand. Exactly. I don't have, think it had any chance to go in. I'm not even sure it would have gotten to the rim. Right. Duke back in front. Third team all season to lead UNLV in the second half. Joining Arkansas and Michigan State. Kubek has got to help out there for Leitner. He's going to pick up some foul trouble inside. Leitner gets the steal. Denies the entry. to go over the top of Larry Johnson. And what happened is Augman's coming from the weak side. Kubek missing. Look at where Hunt is. He's... Davis, nice play to reach in and take it out of the hands of Gray. About the first tough judgment that Anthony made today. He had no passing angle there on the break. Anderson Hunt wanted the ball on the sideline there for a three. The winner of this game plays Kansas Monday night for the championship. Crawford Palmer back in, Kubek out. Nice move by Mike Krzyzewski. That puts Palmer on Johnson and allows Leitner to, to guard Gray and stay out of foul trouble. Jerry Tarkanian, bringing the brilliant strategist he is, said, no, I'm not going to let you have an, an off day here. He comes back with Spencer, so Leitner has to guard somebody in the low post. Anthony, sensational day. His third offensive rebound. But he misses two. And it's off UNLV. You can see what UNLV is doing. They're crashing everybody to the boards. Duke has got to take advantage with some long passes for fast breaks. Solid screen coming up for Hurley. Hurley weaving around. Look Missing tough. a jumper. Yeah, tough shot. Augman looking for the break opportunity. Johnson on a wing. You can't fault Davis on that because he realized the toss was going to come back for Anderson Hunt, who beat him with the dribble. And you can't you can't take away everything. Hunt had 29 against Duke in last year's title game to claim the MVP honors of the Final Four. He has 20 in this one. Crawford Palmer way too high, but the foul was called on Anthony. Now he and, and hurt he his hurt, hand. Yes, he hurt his hand again. And he's just going to sit back. Most guys would not have even played with that injury. He'll battle back. Sure he will. UNLV and Duke dueling it out. Hot action at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. Jim Nance and Billy Packer and Duke. And UNLV tied at 53. Completely different kind of game from last year's championship game. Everyone had wondered all week, could Duke do it? And, now. and Jim, they've handled that onslaught of immediately coming out the start of the second half. Oh, Leitner, not, we saw Freddie Brown pass all over again. Went right into the hands of Hunt, and he falls. Hunt falls on his and remember arm remember the elbow. shoulder, remember Hunt's shoulder problem, which he re-aggravated in it. An auto injury this week. Leitner just got mixed up, threw it right in the hands of Hunt. Exactly. It was a Freddie Brown play. You can see Hunt fearlessly going in there, and you can see he comes down on that shoulder. Anderson very hot out there. Feel that he was undercut. Boy, these are tough kids mentally and physically. So McCaffrey is uh, called on the foul. Hunt regroups and goes to the line. 
But I'll tell you one thing, I'm sure that the UNLV players are gaining some respect for the courage of the Duke players as well, Jim. And that's one thing we knew about this team, and Mike Krzyzewski's told us all year. This club is a tougher team physically and mentally than the one he brought to the final field last year. You remember yesterday, Kansas watching everyone else practice? Well, now they're leaving the locker room, showered and dressed, and, uh, well, they're going to go back, heading to the bus. Hunt makes one out of two. He has all 11 points in this half for the running Rebels. And he is fired up. The intensity level in his eyes right now to go after Bobby Hurley is unbelievable. Oh, that's going to be intentional. Away from the action. They call it on Augman. That'll be two and the ball. Two and the ball on a on Augment, and now McCaffrey wants to go to the line. A very outstanding free throw shooter. I believe Davis is the one that should be up there, however. Two shots for Brian Davis. And Duke will have possession. That's Duke's first miss from the line in this game. Eight out of nine. Well, Davis, a 74% free throw shooter. And of course, McCaffrey, an outstanding free throw shooter at 84%. This one would tie it. Tied at 54. It's interesting, Jim, how much more difficult it is to shoot free throws when there's nobody down on the lane, you know, all by yourself out there. It's a lonely, lonely feeling. Hunt, great steal. Has had terrible problems today getting the ball in bounds and out of bounds situations. Hunt misses the jumper. Davis right into his arms for the rebound. Looking to go long. Swings it over to Hurley. Now McCaffrey. Leighton Walk got by with a nice dish. Beautiful pass. He wrapped it around the defender right into the arms of Davis for the bucket. A steal by McCaffrey. Two players on the floor. Palmer helped force it. Davis will challenge. And tried to put it up with the left hand. Not a good idea. Bad angle. Yep. Hunt slashes. Oh, misses. Palmer with a couple of big plays. Yes, and a good job by Bobby Hurley to slow things down a little bit. And Larry Johnson gives the fist. He's tired. He wants to come out of this one. And Ackles gets off the bench to check in for him. It's going to be a war of, of wills here. And Jim, remember what we said at the top of the show, pressure points. There will come a time in this game, if UNLV doesn't get a good run going here, that they'll start looking at that clock. We're talking about immortality here, an opportunity to tie UCLA, one of the great streaks of all time, an undefeated national championship. A lot of pressure going to build. McCaffrey draws the foul. Talk about pressure points. They're dealing with unknown territory in a close game down the stretch. Let's go to Leslie Visser. Jim, a couple of the guards for UNLV are a little bit banged up. Anderson Hunt's been flexing his right hand and, of course, his left shoulder. He aggravated this week after he hurt it against Seton Hall. Greg Anthony has that perennial, his, the ring finger on his left hand that uh, he's been icing over here during the timeouts. Jim? You remember last year, Bobby Hurley having to run back and forth to the to the bathroom? Right, had the flu, in all fairness to the young man who did not have a good Final Four last year, but he has certainly played well today. And I don't believe he's been out of the game, has he, Jim? No, he's gone the whole way. Yep. Today, it's UNLV's guards feeling a, a little bit beat up and blue. Caffrey, excellent free throw shooter. Has a funny rotation for a good shooter, but buries him normal. Three-point Duke lead. Anthony on the floor doing a little Harlem Globetrotter act. Obviously not walking because he kept the dribble alive. And with Johnson out, Duke getting very aggressive with their man-to-man. Hurley's on the foul. Score the basket. And Anthony gives him a glaring stare as Hurley's on the floor right after the basket. Uh, everybody's being tested 
right now in regard to the Wills. You can't ask for any better defense by Bobby Hurley, and you can't ask for any better offense by Greg Anthony. One shot, Ned. See Hurley moving those feet very well. Anthony Greg just goes up on him and then hesitates using his chest to go ahead and fend off the defender. And look at that follow through. Right on down to Bobby Hurley's face. Yeah. <laughs> Gave him the uh, icy glare for about three seconds. First player other than Hunt to score in this half, and the three-point play ties it at 57. What a game we're having. Second part of our national semifinals, the winner plays Kansas. And back to the Amoeba defense. Pretty good shooters on the floor right now for Duke. McCaffrey being one of them. There he is. He's McCaffrey. over the line. That's a two-pointer. Yep. Had both feet right on the line. Yep. Good job by Hurley to recognize that he had him flattened out on the side. Anthony. Oh. In and out. And Grant Hill barks as he makes the rebound. He's having a big day. On the way, oh. Leitner. Oh, left, left hand. hand. Huh. Sensational play. Larry Johnson sitting on the sidelines, ready to come back in. And there's a quiet Stacy Ogman. Spencer tried to dunk the follow. Jim, you know, everybody has talked about Mike Krzyzewski and his incredible record in the NCAA tournament. He has lost four out of the last five years to the national champion, eventual national champion. Some stretch. The only team he... Uh failed to to lose to that didn't go on to win it was to Seton Hall in 89 after That's Michigan right. beat Seton Hall in the final an air ball free throw by Spencer 86 he lost to Louisville 87 to Indiana not in the final four but lost to the eventual champ 88 of course to Kansas and 90 last year to UNLV Johnson in now for the shooter Elmore Spencer good job by Elmore to make the second one. It's you talking about pressure, Billy. You, you airball the first one. Well, Ackles back in two with four. You're right, Jim. He he buried the second one. Looked very good at doing it. Back to aggressive man-to-man -man with the starting team now on the floor for UNLV with arrested Larry Johnson and Ackles also arrested. So they should pick up some defense here. Duke has all of its starters except for Thomas Hill. It was out, McCaffrey in. McCaffrey comes up short. He got pushed by Larry Johnson on the play. What There's a pass. There's a pass. The pass from Anthony. And Hunt no. wants the intentional foul. It should not have been because Hurley was, and, and I don't see any official signifying intentional. Hurley did the right thing. He just engulfed him. Well, we've got a technical, Billy. I think it's going to be a technical on UNLV as well. Now, what's going to happen here? Is it going to have Johnson? Yeah, it's going to be two shots. Tark is incorrect on that one. Bobby Hurley did a good job. He was going to play a defensive play. He did not push from behind. He made a basketball play defensively. So that's going to help Duke because they'll get two shots on one end and the ball back. There's another one of those patented tosses. Hunt goes in. Now watch Hurley. He's going up to make the block. He went after the ball. Aggressive, but he went after the ball. <laughs> Just happened to take Anderson Hunt's arms off. But... See the play. Bobby Hurley goes up, going for the block, stays with it all the way. Hunt missed the first. And they are huddled on the sideline at UNLV. They are slapping each other on the back, saying, let's go after it. A moment ago, there was a nice gesture. Anderson Hunt went over to Bobby Hurley and shook his hand and said, hey, now let's play basketball down the stretch. Well, they have not backed this Duke team down. They put Leitner on the line. He's, he's the obvious choice to shoot the technicals. Technical win against Larry Johnson. One more for Leitner, and it'll be Duke's basketball. It's great to see both of these teams with the intestinal fortitude they have. I mean, they're just not backing down to each other. That's long. Duke by three. 62, 59, 11, 49 to go. Duke with the basketball and a three-point lead. Grand Hill wanting 
the challenge on when he gets it back over to Kubek. Wisely. Kubek. Nice fake. Yes. Jump stop and hits it. His first two of the game for the first player ever to play in four final fours. Brett Kubek. And I'm going to venture to say the last. <laughs> Johnson got the pump fake. Oh. Kubek committed. Johnson hit it. He's been silent, though, Billy, in the second half. That's his first two of the second half, eight for the game. Of course, he sat down for a good portion of it, and he, and he asked to come out. Yeah, out of exhaustion. Yep. Now, look at this matchup. Ackles on Kubek. Ackles with the four fouls. And the reason for that, as Jerry Tarkanian knows, Kubek's the least likely guy to go ahead and put the ball on the floor to get him out of there. Oh, that's blocked. Oh, Underneath is Lathner. Oh. Second chance. And a foul called on Johnson. His uh, second. Jo Johnson is starting to get a little hot. That's the first time I've seen him lose his cool. Well, he got no, he said, yep. he said, how about down on the other end? There's no question. He committed the foul there. Let's get a report from James Brown. Jimmy, playing off of Billy Packer's comment about Larry Johnson getting hot, Brian Davis of Duke told me before the game, hey, this will be about establishing territorial rights on the basketball court. He said in playground vernacular, it's called not succumbing to the wolfing, the talking by Vegas. I guarantee you that my guys will not back down. During the last timeout when Hurley walked over, Davis gave him a high five. Davis turned to me and winked and said, hey, I told you so. Let's go back to Jimmy. Davis's roommate and best friend, Christian Leitner, hits the first of two. One of two, four-point lead for the Blue Devils. And Duke goes back to the zone. Look out, Anderson Hunt. Look out, Larry Johnson. Made it from there last time. It was a two. That was a three-point try. Kubek with the rebound. And yeah, if Vegas doesn't come back with Larry Johnson taking threes, they need him down in the box. Look who's back. Thomas Hill in for Duke. Yep. And Duke's spreading it way out now. Look at where they've made, set up their offense. Well, they've got, they've a got half of a half to go to make history. To wipe out one of the heralded, most heralded teams in college basketball history. Well, this is doing a number of things. It's going to make Vegas do all the work, and it rests Christian Leitner. Duke starting five on the floor. Hurley, Kubek, Hill, Hill, and Leitner. Johnson with a big play. They tried to go inside to Leitner. Johnson came around. Underneath Augman. Very well executed. The cross-court passing from Hunt to Greg Anthony set that up. Augman's first two of the second half. It's taken Augman and Larry Johnson a long time to get into the swing of things in the second half. Mike Krzyzewski tried to play a little delay there. He might want to get his team right back into playing. Oh, there's a foul. Yep. No call on Anthony. Anthony almost had a headlock yes. on Hill, but it's a turnover, and let's go to Leslie Visser. Jim, Jerry Tarkanian has shown some real fiery emotion in the last couple of timeouts. He wants his team to keep moving the ball around specifically to get it to Larry Johnson. No surprise there, but he's told them you haven't gotten it to Larry during the entire half. He wants that defensive intensity on the other end. Jim? All right. Anthony trying to drive on Hurley. Joined by his partner in the backcourt, Hunt. Everett Gray is in. Johnson and Augman. Hunt scores and he is fouled. And he is showing us something today, Jim, in this respect. He realizes that Duke is not going to let him take the three, and he's driving right on by. It's an excellent play on his part. Because what Duke has been doing, anytime he touches the ball, they're rushing at him to take away the jump shot. And that's the second time today he's put the ball on the floor and driven in for a, a layup. Chance for a three-point play and to give the Rebels the lead at 66-65 if he makes. He does. He had not been off to a great start in this tournament. The first four games, his shooting was well below his average. But today, he's turned it on. And again, you see UNLV turning up that defensive intensity, particularly Larry Johnson fighting Leitner down inside. He 
what Hurley's trying to do is to pick up the switch on the solid screen. Bounce pass came back to him. Thomas Hill in traffic. Say off the foot of a UNLV player. Duke retains. What a day of basketball in Indianapolis. Leitner snaps it over. Skip pass to Hill. Right back to that corner to Hurley. Really good defense by Vegas there. Hill got caught. Whoa! And that... And Hill went in the air and was going to take the shot. Greg Anthony, with a great defensive play, cannot believe he was called for the foul on the pass. That's his fourth. Now Tark has Ackles with four and Anthony with four. And that's eight on the run and Rebels, so Duke will shoot a one and one. See the play right here. Oh, he did. He got him on the elbow. Not on the shooting hand either. Thomas Hill writes right-handed, eats right-handed, plays tennis right-handed, does everything right-handed but shoot the basketball. And he decided in junior high that he just felt more comfortable shooting it lefty. Well, in the tournament, 18 against Northeastern Louisiana, 17 Iowa, 18, of course, against Connecticut. Uh, just an outstanding player in the tournament with let's an explosive watch. score. But Billy, let's watch now as Anthony has to sit with four. Ackles is in. Now, that means that Anderson Hunt is going to be required to be the floor general, which takes away a lot of his scoring. Secondary ball handler probably going to be Stacy Ogman. Two free throws by Thomas Hill, and Duke's back in front by one. The 19th lead change of this game. Boy, and Bobby Hurley is going to pressure Hunt here, and this really takes away an awful lot of his ability to score because he's got to handle the ball. Hunt trying to drive on Hurley. Takes the jumper. Oh, oh, oh. oh, what a day for Anderson Hunt. 27 points. Anderson Hunt taking on the challenge. UNLV by one. Going against the zone. Ryan Davis back over to Hurley. Perimeter passing. Hurley wanted it. Faked. They just don't give you that three-point shot. They sure don't. Inside the Leitner. No goaltending. Now, there have been other ones called. That may have been the best case, but it's a block. Duke has possession. Time out on the court. UNLV by one. UNLV being threatened like at no other time this season. Leading by one with 7.20 to go. They lob it. Davis underneath. Leitner tries to keep it alive, and it's off his hands. It belongs to UNLV. Well, in that particular case, Davis gave Ackles too much credit as a shot blocker. He needed to go up strong with that one and draw potentially his fifth foul. How about the two guards for Vegas? Uh, incredible. 46 of 68 points so far today. Anderson Hunt trying to add to his 27. Long rebound comes to Davis. A basket, and Duke regains the lead. Hurley was looking long. Wisely didn't take a chance. And ULLV has to go back to the zone, trying to protect the foul problems that they have. Ackles and Anthony both with four. Anthony presently sitting out. Oh, he's back out there, isn't he? So yes. he's got two on the floor with four. Anthony and Ackles. Oh, nice Davis drive. Smashing. Nice yes. drive. Looked like another number 23 on that one, didn't he? Way he slashed to the basket. <laughs> Guy used to play in the ACC a little bit, Michael Jordan. Do you know the run by one. You know the numbers, Jim. I never know numbers. Hunt. That's a three-pointer. Whoa, way short. They say it was off Johnson. And again, Brian Davis charging right out at Anderson Hunt. Not so easy to make those threes when a six-foot-five athlete comes right in your face who can really jump. Six minutes to go. And we'll find out about pressure points, Billy. One of the keys that we talked about before this game started. So much on the line for these UNLV players. Not to say it isn't for Duke, but you know most of these guys are going to have another chance. 
20 on the shot clock. Matter of fact, on the floor, there's not a senior for Duke. Meanwhile, old Grand Hill looking yep. inside, lost concentration. Freshman turns it over. Four seniors on the floor for UNLV. And isn't it amazing, Jim, they haven't been able to get the ball to Larry Johnson. I mean, we talked about the big mismatch Duke would have. Now they do, down inside. Johnson follows. And a foul called on Thomas Hill. Accidental elbow by Larry Johnson that time hit Thomas Hill. And there was a nice piece of officiating. It wasn't intentional at all. Now watch Johnson makes his first play and bounces back up to make the second one. Just quick, powerful move. You talk about backing in, though, on your defender, huh? You see the little elbow right there, and that was not intentional at all. And Bobby Hurley again whining a little bit, but certainly should not have been called. Eight points for Johnson to go with 12 rebounds. You know, Johnson and Thomas Hill, who now sits, replaced by Kubek, Hill and Johnson actually had played against one another in high school. They're both Texans. Larry out of uh, Skyline High School in Dallas and Thomas Hill out of Lancaster, Texas. And the two free throws give the running Rebels the lead. Well, Larry Johnson has been considered by some the National High School Player of the Year. He's been the National Junior College Player of the Year and, of course, the National College Player of the Year. Good feed. Kubek to Davis. Greg Kubek. Is he come on well for Duke? A young man who at Christmas time when he didn't play against Oklahoma was going to stay home and not come back to Duke. Was despondent about his yep. playing time. On the blocks, Johnson. That's an automatic two. Inadvertent whistle here. Jerry Tarkanian wanting time out. Well, there's no... Uh, uh -oh. No timeout. I, I don't know what that call was all about. He certainly wouldn't want to take one now. By the way, Tart today is going for his 600th Division I victory. Right at 599. Second to Dean Smith in Division I victories. Active coaches. Oh, oh here comes Aaron the steal. Pass. Yep. Hunt over to Anthony. Gets the follow by Hunt, I should say. And a three-point lead for the defending champions with 4.20 to go. Twice, Hurley and Grand Hill did not connect on what should have been an easy pass. Kubek with a three. Would have been a big one. Ackles with the rebound. There goes Augman looking for the pass. Talk about pressure points. Are we watching the start of a run for Vegas? Well, what the run has been is Larry Johnson getting the ball in the low post, which I don't blame Jerry Tarkanian for calling timeout and saying, hey, let's get the ball to number four. And charge. Yes, they call the charge no on basket. Anthony. No basket. And that's it. He's out of here. Five for Anthony. He carried this team in the first half with his great play, and he's going to call his teammates over to say, fellas, Win this one while I'm sitting on the bench. UNLV, the vaunted Vegas team, will go the final four minutes without its floor general, Greg Anthony, who has fouled out. Ackles has four. Front court scoring almost double for Duke. Johnson and Augman combined for 18 points and Greg Anthony senior has fouled out of this game he brought his team together his teammates on the floor and said guys do it for me I want to play on Monday tremendous leader on this ball club 16 points in the first half almost carried the team single-handedly and back to the amoeba situation Vegas has not faced a tight game down the stretch compounded by the difficulty of not having Anthony. McCaffrey for Duke. I think the team would be better getting Davis out front. Let McCaffrey go down in the corner where he can shoot the three. Hurley's looking for him. Now needing help. Hurley looking. Gets it to Davis. He'll turn around. Long. Gets his own miss. 
Kubek way short. Gray with the rebound. Anderson Hunt might have gotten a piece of that ball. Big shot. Couldn't get it to Christian Leighton. Now we go back to that point I made that Anderson Hunt now will be required to score as well as do all the ball handling. It's asking an awful lot of him. Stacy Augman gives it back up to Hunt, who clears out Gray. Again, Kubek and Johnson, they've got to get the ball to Larry Johnson down low. You see the shot clock coming to 10. Gray now goes inside. Johnson dishes to Eccles. Oh. Eccles on the tip. Bodies everywhere. Five-point lead for UNLV. Largest lead of the game for Vegas. Still plenty of time to not worry about threes, and Hurley hits one right there and because it was available. What a big three by Bobby Hurley. He now has 12. Timeout called by Duke with 2.14 remaining. A two-point game and one to remember. If you're Duke, you can even think about fouling strategy at this point. Hunt, 67% free throw shooter. Ackles, 59. Gray, who's still in the game, 60. I think not a bad idea to go ahead and foul some. Don't let Larry Johnson get down in the box and get a three-point putback. He's being guarded by Grant Hill. Boy, Hill really fronting him. See, Leighton are not going to go out on Ackles. Smart move. Approaching 20 on the shot clock. UNLV trying to use some clock here. Here's where they miss Anthony, maybe. Oh, sure do. And also, you've got to admire what Hunt's going to do. He tries to get the solid screen. Good step out by Leitner. They lob it inside to Johnson. Leitner got a hand on it to deflect it. I thought he fouled him. Didn't you, Jim? I did, too. Three on the shot clock, but no call. Well, Christian Leitner holding his hand a little bit. Larry Johnson just kind of laughing at him. Thomas Hill in for McCaffrey. A big five seconds right here on this possession for UNLV. With a two-point lead, 131 left in the game. Augman will inbound underneath. Got to watch that lob right inside. Goes to Ackles. Shot clock running down. They'll have to No take time, it. no time. He doesn't realize it. He lost it. Duke D's up. UNLV turns it over. You know, Stacy Augman, for one of the first times in his career of late, is facing a man who has the same type of skills as far as quickness and size in Brian Davis. And he was really challenged. 124 remaining. A two will tie it, a three will put him in front. Pressure points, Jim. UNLV has not been in this situation all season. The last time they can think about a game like this was Ball State back in the Western Regional last year. Yep, last year's Sweet 16. Grant Hill driving. Baseline, he finds Davis. Off the glass. Score it, and he's fouled. And look at a sign now for the UNLV players, Jim. Watch their eyes to see if they look up at the clock. You knew Davis would take it and go for the dunk. Weaved his way inside beautifully. Grand Hill again showing nice patience to drive. And again, against the zone, there's not that ball pressure that Vegas knows. The Duke bench and uh, Thomas Hill gave Kubek a little elbow <laughs> to the face accidentally. He talked just a moment ago about Davis's athletic ability. He's made several big plays in this game. Now the game is tied. The free throw can put him in front with 62 seconds remaining. Dukes in front by one. And Hurley on Hunt. Larry Johnson steps outside. Leitner's on him. Goes for Altman. Johnson's there. Johnson's going to be shooting free throws. Oh, he crashed those boards. Duke could almost take a chance of releasing somebody long and not trying to rebound, just smack the ball on the other end. Because UNLV sent in all five men to the boards. Larry Johnson, far and away the best free throw shooter on this club. 82%. 
As we have pointed out, it's been a long time since he's faced a free throw that had a lot riding on it. He'll shoot two. Oh. One more for Johnson. Of course, he has that hesitation type shot. Hill was in the lane. Thomas Hill was in the lane, and it is because of the way Larry Johnson shoots his foul shot. He puts it up there, hesitates, and you think he's going to shoot, and then he releases later. You'll see Thomas Hill step in with his right foot too early. Excellent call. Duke had the rebound. All for naught. The hitch fooled Hill. Johnson with another chance to tie it. Now, Duke could hold for the last shot. No sense putting one up at all here. All sevens on the board, 77 apiece. And Tart goes to man to man. Seven, 17th tie of the game, four second difference on the shot clock. Jerry Tarkanian sitting on the bench with a towel on his head like he's on vacation in the Bahamas or something. Mike Krzyzewski up on the sidelines. 20 seconds to go. Can Duke pull off one of the biggest upsets Hill's in Final the, Four history? The angle. Off the glass, no, he went for the swish. Leitner with the rebound. Foul. No basket. Leitner will go to the line. The foul was on Gray. He will shoot two. 12.7 seconds remaining, Billy. Well, Jim, there was tremendous conversations about are they one of the greatest of all time? We will find out. UNLV has called timeout. We'll be right back. All right, Jimmy, the report from the Duke bench was all confidence on the part of Mike Krzyzewski. He's assuming that Leitner is going to make his free throws. He told his guys when he makes them back on defense, do not give up the threes. Back to you, Jim. Seven of nine from the line. Let's watch. Johnson and UNLV. Duke is 12 seconds away from one of the biggest upsets in Final Four history. Blank look of Jerry Tarkanian. Will his team rise to this challenge with 12 seconds to go? Jim, I think you're going to see the ball in the hands of two people. Anderson Hunt, Larry Johnson, and in the case of Duke, I would take the chance and say, don't try to grab a rebound, bat it long, because you can believe UNLV is going to send five men to the boards. Larry Johnson brings the ball up. Looks like he wants to go all the way with it. He's outside now, stopping his dribble, Leitner on him. Hunt will have to do something. Put the three. 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 Off the back Cut of the it long. Hurley's got it. Duke has done it. Duke has upset UNLV. 